Hey guys, welcome to the first match of BSL Season 13 semifinal between Phoebus and Jiraiya. Jiraiya actually even throwing up the Team Red tag. By the way, check out STPL if you haven't. And also, while I'm at it, remember to check out the New Worlds Map Contest. Season 2 of it is active right now on the Team Liquid forums. So vote for your favorite map. Check them out there. I think Turbine is in the running once again. That's the map contest that brought us Wavelet, also brought us Goodnight. Uh, I believe last season. 12 o'clock location. Thebes starting as the Black Terran. Bottom right-hand corner, we have Jiraiya starting as the Brown Zerg. So we're going to have the uh, lower shades of the color spectrum match off. Jiraiya pulling out some insane matches versus Keen. Phoebus having trouble against Rancor himself, but able to pull it out in Game 5. Phoebus, strong, aggressive player. He's the guy I'm going to favor in this set overall. But Jiraiya, as we saw against Keen, finds ways to win matches. So I would not be shocked to see him put up a good fight and possibly win this series. Overlord kind of taking an odd path towards the third. It looks like it's just running towards the natural expansion. In the meantime, no front door seal for Thebus. Just going to build that supply depot along that edge. I'm curious what we're going to see out of Jiraiya's ZVT. Phoebus' ZVT has looked incredible thus far. He's opening up, it looks like, with an 11 hatch. Phoebus grabbing a barracks around his, uh, not assimilator, <laughs> his Vespine Geyser. Going ahead and moving out that initial SCV scout, and he is going to scout, looks like that third position first, so Dry will have some time to hide that build order. But Thebus just seems like he has a lot of build orders to either be aggressive or responsive. And it's hard to predict. Like, he's thrown out, what, like seven Marines, a couple SCVs, and pushed out? It's been incredible. Spawning pool. Plopping down for Jiraiya. So looking very, very typical for him. I'm curious if Jiraiya's going to try to go for standard two-hatch play. Phoebus has lost a match or two against that. Also curious what Thebus is going to do on his side of things. It looks like he isn't going for the Vespine Geyser as of yet. He's just grabbing that second supply depot, is building that initial Marine. SCV Scout making its way towards that natural expansion. And Jiraiya looks like already... I don't think this is a drone. Well, it's possible this is a scouting drone. Overlord making its way to the Pelotal Clock. Probably a scouting drone. Gonna grab some minerals first. Actually, never mind. It was just moving out to the hatchery right there. So Jiraiya actually playing a little bit in the dark here. Phoebus, upon seeing the 12th hatch, actually probably preparatory anyway, grabbing his natural expansion, realizing he's not going to have to deal with a lot of trouble off the bat. Four Zerglings in production, Extractor up the 305 mark. And the first Marines on a defensive position. Now with this Overlord hovering out here, knowing Phoebus, might go hunting for it. We'll see. Yeah, actually, I already missed a Marine trying to hunt an Overlord. That might have been why Triad took such an odd path to make sure that Overlord wasn't exposed, knowing Phoebus' aggression. Three Marines grouping up. Refinery being grabbed. We have seen Phoebus opt for that early engineering bay play, trying to get that plus one weapons to potentially deal with that pressure. Six Zerglings making their way across the map. Four Marines are here. Supply Depot in the way as part of the SimCity. But depending on Micro, this could be trouble. Zerglings pushing through that gap. Looks like the Zerglings are, in fact, going to back off rather than engaging. Lair being morphed at the natural expansion rather than the main, but I do think Phoebus got a good look at it. So two hatch play currently from Jiraiya. More Marines making their way out to the natural. Looks like it is going to be a second barracks and an academy. So a little bit more stereotypical baseline. I believe this is kind of like the, the solid meta. Getting the two racks, getting the academy, getting Stimpak out, playing the game from there. Third hatchery being grabbed, but rather than going at the upper third, it's going to be at a distance at the 5 o'clock location, or 6 o'clock location, approximately. Two additional Zerglings being produced, potentially to take out that SCV. And a Hydralis den. Interesting. Was that an intentional show? This is an unusual play. So it looks like it might be Lurker play. Three hatch Hydra, but this is the third base at a extreme distance. So Jiraiya is hoping to show two hatch lurker 
But otherwise, it's just, I think, hoping and praying that Thebus will not find that 6 o'clock expansion. Because it is going to be very difficult to defend should it get scouted. So he's trying to show 2-hatch Lurker. He's going for 3-hatch Hydra play. If he is going to try to make an attack out of it, reinforcing from this location, Hydras have to traverse an extremely long distance to make that happen. Comstat stations up. Third barracks on the way. Stimpak about halfway finished. And the engineering bay just finishing. We'll try to get a look at where the scans drop. Checking out the natural expansion. Sees the extractor. Sees the hydro den. And sees a Sutton colony on the front. No second scan from Thebus. Needs to... That is... I kind of like this play from Jiraiya as far as a mind game. So he's showing the hydro den. He's showing the lurker. And what that is going to do is, is that's going to make Thebus save that compsat station so he has more detection to work with which makes hiding this hatchery somewhat easier. So he's going to try to take that quick third hatch and rely on the fact that Phoebus is going to be concerned in preserving Comsat to deal with the lurkers to make that work. Initial grouping of medic marines starting to push through. I do like lurkers on this map in particular because of these gaps where spines can just do an immense amount of damage should they get positioned. The Zerglings trying to go for a run by. There was a fire bat there. You can see already preparing for a potential... Counterattack. The Zergling is able to get a handful of Marines, but not getting a lot else out of this. Thebus' economy rolling in the meantime. Very rapidly getting a starport. Range about two-thirds finished, and he's just been pumping Marines in the midst of this. Ten supply up. Level 1 weapons also on the way. Two Sunken Colonies on the front. Lurker's morphing there as well. And I think Jiraiya just wants to play this and push for quick three gas, skipping Muta altogether. Looks like he's going to be stymied a bit in this because that Overlord getting caught in open field, putting him in the red. He does have three gas. Hold position lurking lurkers at a very odd position. Not along a, a typical path there for Thebus. In the meantime, Thebus is producing a siege tank with the starport. So he's and we've seen this play out of him as far as a follow-up with the three racks multiple times. Actually going Wraith. Interesting play. Compsatting again, sees the Queen's Nest, sees the Lurkers morphing, and he has to know at that stage upon seeing the Queen's Nest that there's a third base someplace. So moving out with that SCV, trying to find it on location. The economy's rolling, some Lurkers and Sunken Colonies here. We also have an Evolution Chamber trying to get Carapace 1. So Dry with a very unusual build order. Thebus holding the upper position in the meantime. The SCV Scout, yeah, checking everything at the 9 o'clock. Not finding a base here. Let's see if he sweeps to the six. He's grabbing that fourth barracks. First Wraith out. And I like the decision of the Wraith to pick off these overlords that are open and late in position where the the, the Hydralis just can't get position to defend them. To slow Jiraiya's economy down. Smart play. Expansion has been found. That is quite a distance to cover. Thebus comps heading again just to check that natural expansion. Hive is being built. He's going to have the Hive timing approximately with that. And now it's decision time for Thebus. Is he just going to go for a front door break? Siege Tank is there alongside. He's got that fourth barracks and fifth barracks in construction. Don't see a science facility anywhere here. He does have some Comsat to potentially work with though. Looks like he's making his way out potentially to the five o'clock base. A hatchery being built but being can't well actually taken out on that corner for only a marine. Big losses there. And a split attack force from Thebus. Sending some Marines and a Medic. And it looks like those Lurkers in the middle of the field are going to see this army coming across. And able to do some damage right there. This Zergling is going to see these Marines moving to the 6 o'clock location. But Thebus, with two armies split, I don't know that he's going to have enough to punch through at either location. More Lurkers being planted from Jiraiya at the natural expansion. A Wraith. Able to get two kills in the main. Continue to do damage there. Defiler Mound being planted. Some Hydralisks able to move back and take that out. Phoebus with a strong economy. He just needs to stop Jiraiya from hitting that tier 3 tech. Sweeping around to the corner. Wants to come in from the right. Jiraiya on top of it. He's already got Lurkers in position there. So looking for a two-pronged attack. Standard Phoebus stuff. Science Vessel now in position with the Siege Tank. And Jiraiya has... A window of time here where he needs that Defiler Mound to get up. He needs Defilers to get 
in position. The Marines also engaging here at the 6 o'clock location. Able to take out the three Lurkers there before backing off. So trying to press in at both locations. And Jiraiya needs to hurry. He's got the Defiler Mound up. Needs a Defiler and consume as rapidly as possible. And actually needs Defilers at two locations. Really the main of the natural expansion, I should say, is going to be the critical one. To defend these Lurkers under Swarm. And if he can get that Defiler up, it is going to be a huge swing in momentum. Currently, though, Thebus up 30 supply. So not in a bad position at all. But hitting that Tier 3 tech... Very, very strong. Phoebus now moving in with an overwhelming attack force. We do not see the Defiler here yet. The Zerglings pressing in, sacrificing their lives. The Hive now in a press position. Consume a ways off. I still don't see a Defiler even on the ground. Overlord's being picked off. Some Lurkers repositioning. So a counterattack happening with reinforcements from the south. But that does open up a potential for the base to be counterattacked. So Jiraiya, rather than waiting for the Defiler, is just going to try to rush through with all of these Lurkers. This does look like it's going to be sufficient to wipe this out. But can he do this? So holds here, but can he do this and defend the 5? Looks like he basically made a conscious choice to sack the 5 o'clock location to go ahead and defend the main. He's going to lose a lot of Overlords and this hatchery in the midst of it. So Phoebus, happy to lose that army to stop the third gas. And wipe everything else out. He's also grabbing his third base. Jiraiya realizing the situation that he needs to make something happen. Moving streaming lurkers across the map. If he can get those lurkers to the natural expansion with the defiler. That'll be a big swing. Firebat already produced out on the field. The siege tank trying to make its way back. Marines getting obliterated right there. There are science vessels overhead to provide detection. But it won't matter if a defiler can get there to drop that dark swarm. Two defilers now being produced. Jiraiya taking the high ground, but keep in mind there's still this Medic Marine Force that's wandering out for a potential pincer attack. They're moving their way up. Siege Tank getting caught out in midfield. Lurkers dropping. They're going to get compsatted and wiped out, and Jiraiya needs to preserve these units to make it happen. Loses all three of those Lurkers. Does have level 1 Carapace, but, but Phoebus has been keeping up with his upgrades, and it looked like, looks like this attack force is going to get obliterated. And with that, I think that was the ceiling maneuver to give Phoebus a deadlock on this game. I can't imagine him dropping it from here. Another hatchery being planted at the natural expansion. Third base being grabbed at the 3 o'clock. However, Phoebus, with a sizable army to work with, dropping factories, producing more science vessels, he can grab another starport behind this now. He has five factories up. He's got double engineering bay working. He's about to hit level 2 weapons, which is a big spike in power. And you cannot rely on Phoebus to just sit back in a defensive position. It looks like a couple Defilers are out here in the field. They are dropping some Consume. They might just get picked off by the Marine Force. Not enough to radiate here in open field. Maybe Jiraiya can summon enough for it. But right now, Phoebus in a huge advantageous position. One of the Defilers getting picked off. And even with a Skeleton Crew of an attack force out here on the field, Phoebus showing that aggression and attack pressure. Also love this single Marine being left. To both harass these overlords and make sure additional bases weren't snuck out on the field. Phoebus moving out with a big army. Not going to rest on his laurels. Jiraiya did sneak through a lurker and two lings in between here. So Jiraiya does have tech working for him. But upgrade advantage, supply advantage, tier 3 unit advantage should start sweeping in Phoebus' favor momentarily. It looks like a defiler manages to sneak through that line. But it, I don't know that this is going to be that difficult to clean up for Thebus. And even upon losing this base or having it delayed mining for a period of time. He still has an econ economic advantage. Jiraiya piling in that gap. The Defiler taking a hit as it moved out of that Dark Swarm. And these aren't burrowed units. Also additional radiates being dropped. Jiraiya has a few lurkers here. Is able to del delay mining at the third. Phoebus sweeping around to go ahead and attack that location. Dark Swarm has dropped. So we'll see if Phoebus can go ahead and move and take that position. This is the standard games with Phoebus. Action happening absolutely everywhere. Zergling's going to get on top of that siege tank to clean that up. But Phoebus diving into that 3 o'clock with fire bats and siege tanks and everything else. I don't see a defiler here to provide support. Plus there's detection overhead. Two lurkers still standing. More Zergling sweeping in. 
And it looks like Dry is going to defend that. Able to pick off and sweep those Medic Marines. However, the Command Center still stands for Thebus. He can go ahead and resaturate that. He has put, he saved a lot of SCVs to go ahead and make that happen. He's moving in with some Zerglings, hoping that Thebus dropped his macro, but it does not look like he did. He's still at double the supply. More Science Vessels being fielded, and I don't think any... Yeah, no Science Vessels have been taken out. Keep in mind, there's no Spire. Finally, a Spire being built in the background to deal with this. Third Gas being re-grabbed by Jiraiya. How long do you think he can hold it, though? Zerglings engaging some Marines midfield. Level 2 weapons online. The Filer very much in a defensive position. A Vulture actually moving out in the field out of nowhere. Vulture speed also being upgraded. So Thebus just dropping absolutely everything. He's got 8 barracks and a ninth barracks on the way. Level 2 armor should be here in not too terribly long. And he's sweeping in from the north. Tempting units in, into those mines. Science vessel sweeping forward, unopposed. Some more swarms being dropped, more radiates being dropped on those science vessels. Dry is trying to make a game for it of it. At least able to take out that science vessel overhead. But Thebe is also taking position to just go ahead and deny that gas. Some marines having some trouble positioning, and it looks like they're being taken out. Thebe is running a large bank. So that third gas being denied, lurkers, lings, everything else running forward. Again, not a defiler to drop the swarm overhead, but it's enough of an attack force to punch through. Not able to stop that gas as of yet. And once Zerg has three gas, they're never completely out of the game in those scenarios. Zerglings pressing forward. So Thebus potentially in, in sending out a handful of units. Might be dropping things overall. Siege tanks, marines, moving in midfield. A dropship. Did I miss a drop in the main? Might have missed a drop in the midst of that. I think the dropship might have gotten caught out of position. An irradiate eraser trick over the third in the midst of this. Getting a handful of drones. Also, the hydro is being drawn off. A lurker. Was that a lurker dying unburrowed? Dry is setting up position to maybe take this 5 o'clock location. The third has been taken out. A science vessel finally being picked off by some air units. This science vessel is low on life. And Thebus has been a little bit careless with his science vessels. I don't see a lot overhead. Large grouping. So Jiraiya making a match has been able to hold on. And again, Thebus uncharacteristically not holding a sizable attack force to engage this. He's still applying all the pressure in the world. But regardless, things working out, he's holding on. Phoebus moving up. He's at 150 supply, which is shocking that there hasn't been a break yet. Testament to dry his tenacity. Some science vessels out in the field camped at this location to try to de deny an additional base. So it looks like Phoebus is deciding to instead play a longer starvation game. On his side of the map, his main is mined out. His natural expansion is still holding. And he's still working basically at two bases. Dark Swarm cleaning up that high plateau over the third. However, he's only got lurkers underneath, which means the Dark Swarm's doing favor for the Firebats. And Phoebus diving in in the midst of this. The Zergling's pushing up at risk of maybe losing that hatchery. Siege tanks and Marines swarming through the gap. Jiraiya potentially in trouble now. He has the Ultralisk Cavern up, Carapace finishing, but he's already got Medic and Marines on location. Level 3 weapons there against level 3 Carapace, and that is allowing them to chew through those Ultralisks very rapidly. And this is looking like a dire situation. Science Vessel being picked out in the air, and there's GG from Jiraiya. Oof, put up a good fight, but Phoebus able to pull it out. Great game one. We move on to game two. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.